This metaphor might be a little on the nose, but Skull the Hero Slayer brings a fresh new face to roguelite platformers by literally giving you lots of faces. Like the bizarre offspring of Dead Cells and Majora's Mask, this undead adventure combines fast-paced 2D platforming and combat with the ceaselessly amusing ability to swap your hero's entire head, and with it, your playstyle at will. And while it definitely owes a debt to games you might have played before, Skull is by no means a copycat. This game rivals its inspiration and the quality of its chaotic combat while also standing out with plenty of new interesting ideas. As with all roguelike games, the key to getting better at Skull is in both learning the enemy types and bosses you might face in any given area of a randomized run, as well as permanently upgrading your character's base stats and gaining perks that make you a bit stronger with each attempt. But where Skull truly shines is in how its head-swapping idea manages to keep its grind sustainably fun even after dozens of hours of failure. The push of a button transforms your meek little skeleton adventurer into an entirely new monster, like a slightly morbid body-snatching Kirby. There's a fantastic variety of more than 30 heads to find and choose from, including floating genies, card-tossing gamblers, and adorable ants that are basically a pixelated group. Each comes with their own speed, attack range, and abilities that give them a distinct playstyle, and since you can carry two at a time, you're able to instantaneously change between them for maximum effect. In fact, rapidly swapping between your two equipped heads and using their skills synergistically is essential. For example, you might want to play as one of the many slow but powerful melee classes, like the Predator, to brute force your way through combat, but you will likely need a fast-moving skull in your second slot to switch to when you get caught in a tight spot and need to make a quick exit. Critically, every single skull is not only genuinely fun to play, but feels totally viable in the endgame. You might play as a magic casting sorcerer who rains down hellfire upon your enemies, or a demon with some serious melee skills, and they all feel powerful enough to hold their own. The diversity of styles is extremely impressive. As you'd expect, no, demand from a game of this type, Skull the Hero Slayer is downright difficult. There are five distinct areas to fight your way through, each with their own roster of bad guys, environmental hazards, awesome retro soundtracks, and big boss battles lying in wait to knock your block off at the end. There are enormous differences between each area, and the first time you make it to a new one, some of the enemies and mechanics may seem insurmountable or downright cheap. Sure, the beginning area is filled with woodland creatures, weak knights, and simplistic platforming that makes for a relatively safe space to level up your character and start strategizing a build, but a laboratory-themed area further along is fully stocked with devastating magic users and absolutely overflowing with deadly traps. Oh, and almost every enemy explodes when you kill them. Also, there's this lady who constantly summons an army of servants to hit you with brooms and plates before running away like a coward. However, as with lots of procedurally generated games, each one follows a fairly predictable formula where you can begin to recognize the patterns and room layouts after a while, which gives you a leg up. With a solid build and no small amount of practice, making it to the credits is an attainable and enjoyable reward that salves the burn of dozens of failed runs. The bosses at the end of each area are one of the weaker and more straightforward elements of Skull since they lack the same level of variety as the levels themselves. Once you've beaten a boss once or twice, you've seen all that you'll ever see from them, and they begin to feel like chores necessary to advance to the next area rather than intimidating gatekeepers. The lack of boss fight modifiers seems like an odd oversight for a game that nails nearly everything else about the roguelite format. Another area where Skull isn't quite at the head of the class is its story. Last year, Hades raised the bar for storytelling in roguelite action games to godly levels, and while Skull does its best to tug at the heartstrings, its tale of the age-old conflict between the Demon Kingdom and the evil nation of Ben is not particularly well told. The translation from its original Korean dialogue into English is fairly poor at times, and the brief snippets of conversation that take place after each boss battle come off as stiff and a bit awkward which isn't helped by the fact that the twists and turns of the story are about as predictable as they come. That said, there are some compelling characters that shine through, like the shape-shifting witch who helps you along your journey, and a cowardly death knight who loves knitting and interior design. 
Even where the story stumbles, Skull's retro world of skeletons and knights is absolutely dripping with charm, from its beautiful pixelated art style to its role reversal in which the demons are the good guys and the humans are monsters to be slain. Slashing, hopping, and exploding your way through each area again and again only makes the world and its characters more endearing, not counting the few aggravating enemies like those castle servants that might make you want to pull out your teeth with carpenter's tools. Skull the Hero Slayer is an original take on a well-established genre, using its novel head-swapping mechanic to put a plethora of unique playable characters front and center, though both its story and boss variety leave something to be desired, the quirky characters and satisfying fast-paced combat offer a reason to bone up on your skeletal skills even after the credits roll. For more, check out why Hades was our Game of the Year for 2020, and watch a review of Spelunky 2. And for everything else, stick with IGN.